What's up everyone, it's Carter Good Money Vest recording this video at 2.30 in the morning. I am just absolutely exhausted after five hours worth of live streams from Market Open and PayPal and SoFi earnings to Google, AMD, Visa, Snapchat, Reddit. All the stocks covered. We are pretty much wrapped up for the day. So I really appreciate all your support. Make sure that you drop a like on this market update. It's not going to be a long one. It's going to be a shorter one because... I'm literally going to bed at four in the morning, so I really, really appreciate you guys' patience here. Uh, however, technology continues to be the big leader in the market here. That differential that we've been keeping track of, which is the NASDAQ versus utilities, has now come down to less than 3%. So if you take a look at the performance of 11 different sectors in the market on a year-to-date basis, Com Services is now the leader in the market here, especially after Google popped after hours, so it was up a little bit over uh, 5%. So you can see that Google right now is up over 5.3%. After hours, AMD, of course, sold off a little bit over 7 to 8%. We were just listening in on AMD's earnings as well. It's down almost 8% um, after hours here. But Com Services up 27% year to date, the leading sector in the S&P 500. Utilities has come down. It had a pretty brutal, brutal sell-off today. It's down a little bit over 2% on the day here. 25% uh, in the green. And technology is up 22.8%. So that differential, we have seen that getting squeezed from 10% now down to less than 3%. And that is a big rotation in the market as we start to see utilities sell-off and technology do really well. And this has happened on the back of, of course, crude oil prices dropping off uh, since the beginning of October. So October 8th to now, we've seen crude oil prices down over 14% in a span of about 16 days or something, right? So 22 days or something, we've seen crude oil prices down about 14%, which has obviously led to energy stocks, pretty much all of them selling off today. And if you come over to sector-specific analysis, of course, utilities being down over 2% and most of that liquidity flooding over to technology, which was XLK. If you come over to our platform, you can see the overall market, 16 basis points higher. So all in all, I mean, we did see the S&P 500 very flat, up over 16 basis points. The Nasdaq, of course, hitting a new all-time high, up over 78 basis points. And if you take a look at energy specifics here, down over 1.44%, or $24 billion sell-off, compared to, of course, technology, which was up 81 basis points, or $78 billion inflows in that particular sector. So hope you all enjoy this video and find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like if you are just joining us for the first time. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel as well. We've already added our shopping list, something that you guys have been waiting for for such a long time. So this right here is the brand new official 30 stock shopping list that it can now be accessed on our MoneyVest platform. So this is a members only video that you can watch and pretty much unlock this entire shopping list. It's going to be right about there. And once you click on it, you can uh, see the 30 stocks that, in my opinion, are highest quality with the M score, with my fair values, my buy targets, light buys, heavy buys, the differences, the no-brainer buy targets, everything's going to be available with the no-brainer PE ratio also available. So that is now already implemented and deployed on our platform, and you can access the entire 30 stock shopping list. Keep that handy for when the markets do give us those opportunities once again in the future. Now, coming over to some of the other things related to the money vest index, of course, 3.65 is where we are still in the optimistic zone. Uh, we're slowly and steadily kind of making our way lower. However, the markets, given that, you know, we're trading pretty much near all time highs, they have been hovering between 3.5 and 4. So we've been op optimistic for quite a few days now. And we've been in that range for a very long time. We're, of course, coming off of greed. We were well in the greed. If you come over to this, we were in the greed zone back in the middle of October, uh, but since since October 18th, we have really just been in between this zone of 3.5 and 4. So we've been optimistic for quite some time. If you come over to market snapshot, Nasdaq, of course, hitting a new all-time high. Everything well within a dip. And most of the stocks are also trading near all-time highs uh, with Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet in a correction. However, Alphabet with the pop after hours is now going to be well within a pullback, which is going to be less than 5% uh, from its all-time highs. Uh, and of course, Tesla and advanced micro devices, even after the sell-off after the earnings, is now going to be further into bear market territory, along with Qualcomm and AMD, excuse me, Adobe as well. 
So that's going to be that. Um, if you come over to the market calendar, we do have a lot of earnings scheduled for tomorrow and the day after as well. Google reported Visa, AMD. We just got done with those numbers in the earnings call. But don't forget, tomorrow we've got Eli Lilly, Microsoft, Meta, Amgen, Caterpillar. We got ADP numbers, Starbucks coming out, uh, as well as, of course, Apple, Amazon, Chevron, Exxon, Intel, uh, Comcast. And then we also have Atlassian, Uber, all these companies, Merck. All of them are scheduled to report later this week. So there's over $16, $16 trillion worth of companies reporting their numbers. If you come over to the economic calendar, we had the Joe's numbers um, come out earlier today. So 7.44 million. That's how many job openings we had. And I think this was one of the reasons why the markets were so strong today because of a lower than expected, significantly lower than expected job openings numbers at 7.4 million versus an estimated 7.99. So there's fewer job openings compared to the estimates. And if the unemployed persons is at 6.8 million, yes, that ratio is still above one, but we are now slowly and steadily getting closer to one. And if that number drops below one, then of course, we're in a very uh, concerning labor market for the Fed. So even though this is not a great number from an economic standpoint, this was a pretty good number from a market standpoint because interest rate expectations are still pegged for a 25 basis point cut in the November meeting next month. So you can pretty much take a look at that on the uh, CME Fed Watch tool. So we're just going to type that in here. We're going to come over to real markets. Or actually, this is going to be the one, Fed Watch tool. Eight days until the next Fed meeting. As we know, next week is when the next Fed meeting is. Scroll down a little bit, 98% probability. Pretty much a done deal at this point that we're going to see another 25 basis points worth of cut on the next meeting and then another 25 uh, in the December meeting as well. So that's what most investors and analysts are expecting for. GDP numbers come out tomorrow. So that's going to be coming out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, as well as inflation numbers. So personal consumption expenditure, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation coming out on Thursday, as well as unemployment numbers on Friday, which is going to be very, very important for the market as well. Now, coming over to volatility. Now, we are still pretty elevated. So 19.3 is where we are. Um, and this is, again, quite an interesting market dynamics where Volatility continues to be elevated and so is the market. So I think the hedges are still in play because there's investors and analysts or hedge funds basically they are still hedging their positions. One of the reasons why volatility is still pretty elevated despite the markets being at all-time highs. And the first week of the last three months, August, September, October, we have seen the VIX spike and the markets come down representing good buying opportunities for us. So if there's any type of a spike in volatility, that's exactly why I think it's important to be ready with cash. And next month, I'm going to be deploying close to twenty twenty five thousand dollars. I'm ready with that amount uh, to to start buying back into the market a little bit more aggressively. If we see any type of weakness in the market, and of course volatility does spike above twenty three twenty four, if there's an instance for that big spike and the market's coming down, I'm going to be deploying capital into the market a little bit more aggressively. I did pick up SoFi, uh, sent out the alert because of the sell off. Uh, you know after the earnings. I picked that up at 10 bucks. So again, if you want to get access to all the trade alerts, by the way, I do want to mention the 16% annual discount expires at the end of this month. So if you want to take advantage of this discount here and save two months, get two months for free, uh, link's going to be down below. And again, you'll get access to the entire MoneyVest platform as well as the uh, you know weekly options, trade options, trade alerts, uh, options portfolio updates. Everything's going to be available. Um, and the most recent video, uh, of course, is the options portfolio week number nine. If I reload this page, you should be able to see the brand new 30 stocks shopping list. There we go. So there's the 30 stock shopping list also available that you can access and watch on the platform as well. Now, all in all, coming over to the S&P 500. So very, very nice move on the S&P, 16 basis points higher. So not a not a big deal. Uh, it was really just a day for the NASDAQ to shine. S&P is for the most part still flat, uh, still trading within the context of this range. Resistance roughly under 5,900. Support level at 57.66. So again, a lot of consolidation sideways for S&P. And the NASDAQ seems to be breaking out. There is a little bit of a breakout on the NASDAQ here, hitting a new all-time high. So we'll continue to monitor whether this breaks further, whether there's that continuation, or if there's going to be any type of weakness for the NASDAQ as well. I think after hours, we're higher after Google's earnings. So we're up another 24 basis points to $501. So we'll see if the NASDAQ sees that continued momentum to the upside or if there's going to be any type of a rejection 
uh, from that resistance, giving us better buying opportunities in the future. So that's really the whole idea is to deploy capital when the market presents that opportunity um, for us. So that's going to be the goal moving forward as well. Now, coming over to some individual stocks, starting with Apple, uh, continues to trade in this ascending triangle. Resistance roughly at 237. We've got a nice little higher low over here. Uh, support level all the way down to 221, down to 215 for Apple. They're reporting earnings later this week. And so is Amazon. Amazon also pretty much trading sideways, getting a little bit of a breakout above this resistance here. But that right there is going to be that resistance to keep in mind. After hours, though, up another 1.4%, probably on the back of Google advertising and Google cloud revenues coming in very strong. And this right here is going to be the resistance to watch for tomorrow at 195. And that's where we have gotten rejected more recently for Amazon. Coming over to Tesla and Tesla here again uh, fights this resistance here at 270s, which we have discussed on the channel in the past. And this right here has been, you know, the gap that Tesla needs to fill in. This right here is the gap that it left after the earnings. A lot of conversations, a lot of talks around Waymo from Google. The company is still losing a lot of money on that front. Uh, they're still investing, you know, well over uh, $1.5 billion in the last year is what they have burned through in terms of, or in the last quarter, I should say, burned through um, in terms of expenses, but made about $388 million in revenue. And the net loss was just over $1.1 billion. So there was a lot of conversation on Waymo. I will be discussing that in a separate video, but Tesla here uh, still struggling at that resistance at 270 bucks, all the way up to 280 to as much as $300 per share for Tesla. Uh, coming over to NVIDIA, and NVIDIA here consolidating sideways uh, as well. So you can see that we're seeing a lot of lot of sideways action for NVIDIA with a resistance sitting roughly at 144, support level down to as low as 136, and it's just trading sideways at the moment. And of course, a breakout can send us to 145, well in the 150s to new all-time highs for NVIDIA as well. And a very strong support is going to stay put at 128. So that right there is going to be a very, very good level and an area of demand to watch for NVIDIA. Coming over to advanced micro devices, and AMD here, of course, down over 7.5%. Uh, it's coming down to this right here as the higher low. And I discussed this in the other update as well, but this right here is the overall pattern for AMD. And it's kind of gone through very similar times where it has sold off and then eventually broken out to new highs. And I think it could be one of those times where, you know, AMD is seeing a lot of weakness. Support level is going to be right about here, 149, down to as low as 130. So those right there are going to be a couple levels to watch for advanced micro devices. Uh, PayPal also did drop here on the day, but of course, quickly getting bought up. Support level is sitting roughly at $76. So this right here is going to be that level to watch. And of course, we're going to go ahead, turn this level back into a resistance for PayPal and uh, got a little bit of a gap down, but lots of greenery. So buyers are stepping in intraday. And I think the earnings overall was pretty strong. I, you know, I broke this down in the morning live stream that the guidance was raised up. Uh, the earnings beat, the revenue beat, $6 billion in free cash flow expected in 2024. So overall, I think it was a very, very solid number. Uh, I think it was just a, a little bit of an overreaction from the market here, down almost 4%. So in my opinion, this could be representative of a good buying opportunity. It's also part of our shopping list, giving a little bit of way. But we've also got our light buys, heavy buys, and fair values and no-brainer buy targets as part of that shopping list as well. So you can access pretty much all the 30 stocks there if you want. Uh, but for PayPal, I also mentioned that for the first time in a long time, we've seen two consecutive quarters of active accounts growth and transaction per active account, which in other words, engagement also moving in the right direction. I think the reason for the sellout was the reduction in the transaction take rate for the company because 9% growth in TPV, but only a 6% growth in revenue, suggesting for lower transaction take rate. But nonetheless, 81 bucks resistance, support level at $76 for PayPal. Visa reported their numbers uh, up over 1.7%. We also broke this down in our um, market close live stream. Support level is going to be 282. Resistance all the way up to $291. Looks like a beat on both EPS and revenue here. Uh, strong growth. I think 90 10% growth in revenue and earnings. Pretty much the entire quarter is over. The financial year 2024 is over for Visa. And we discussed that in our market close live stream as well. Very, very strong results coming in from this company as well. Now, coming over to Meta Platforms, Google and Microsoft. So coming over to Meta first, uh, they're reporting tomorrow, but they are up 1.6% uh, pre-market on the back of Google's results. Again, this is all on the back of very strong advertising numbers coming in. And uh, Meta is pretty much back up to all-time highs at $603. So very, very nice move to the upside. We kind of talked about this right here, a little bit of a pullback, very similar to what we have seen um, 
in the past, as you'll notice, a little bit of a pullback, then a huge breakout. And right now, a little bit of a pullback, huge breakout. And this is where the resistance, or in other words, the support right now sits for Meta platforms. Talking about Netflix, and Netflix already has reported, so not a lot of movement there. A lot of consolidation sideways. Support level sitting roughly at 736. Huge gap to fill on the down downside. And of course, we got a huge resistance sitting roughly at 772 for Netflix. Google, of course, with a massive breakout. Up almost 6%, 181. Support level is going to stay right about here at $175. And resistance all the way up to as much as 193 now for uh, for Google. So it's gapping up right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of a pullback. 175 is still going to be that support. And of course, filling that gap in a little bit. And then of course, moving back up. Resistance and target is going to stay put at 192. Finally, coming over to Microsoft, which is also higher 1% on the back of the Google Cloud revenues because Microsoft compares really well with Azure. Uh, and again, pushing higher here. And resistance right now is going to stay put at 442 for Microsoft moving forward. So that's going to be that target to watch. And support level now is going to turn back into 431 at the moment for this company. Uh, coming over to Enphase Energy and Costco. Enphase here is slightly down about half a percent. Rotating back down, we filled most of that gap, but not all of it. And resistance is going to be staying put at $83. Support all the way down to $73, $74, kind of aligned with this level from back in November of 23, just about a year ago for Enphase. Costco, on the other hand, consolidating sideways, very, very flat on the day and after hours as well. Support level perfectly sitting at $872. Resistance at $920. We're seeing a lot of consolidation for Costco at the moment as well. So all in all, very strong risk on environment as technology and Max 7 continues to lead this market higher. As you can see from the market concentration, uh, you know, $83 billion change, $62 billion coming from Big 3, Max 7, $154 billion after hours. It's even more considering the rally from Google. Um, and again, if you come over to the biggest gainers, it's all Max 7. We got Microsoft, Meta, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom. It's all the big stocks. And the ones that are selling off, of course, energy. Tesla was a big loser today, down about 1%. Walmart, Home Depot, Exxon, Chevron, Nextera, Coca-Cola, all those companies selling off on the day. So again, if you want to get access to my shopping list, which is now available, 30 stock shopping list on our MoneyVest website, on our platform, uh, make sure that you drop a like and of course, subscribe and check out the links down below for that 16% annual discount. You can join our community, get access to the weekly trade alerts, options portfolio, as well as the MoneyVest website, including 30 stocks, shopping list, and a lot of features that we're adding every single month. We're targeting two to three new features for all of you. You can lock this price in and you will not have to worry about any additional price increases. As always, happy investing. Make sure you drop a like. I'll see you guys in the next video.